Hi guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got another Wee Wednesday, and today I'll be bringing to you two slip joint knives. Next Wee Wednesday, I'll be bringing you siblings of these two knives, which will both be locking blades. One will be, well, they'll both be frame locks. This is by Fura, F-U-R-A, at Gearbest. Gearbest sent these to me. So I've got two little knives, one tiny, itty bitty one, and one little one. And uh, the two uh, locking knives, one's a flipper, and the other one is like a Kershaw you might be familiar with. These are two frame locks. That's next week. This week we've got these two guys. Fura says that they are uh, S35VN, you know, particle stainless steel. There's a chance that it might actually be that. Uh, the price that these things are being selling for would be indicative of that price range. TC4 is a titanium alloy, and that's what the handle is made out of. And uh, yeah, I do think that there's a good chance that this is perhaps S35VN. I don't know for sure. I just need to take their word for it because I don't have any proof otherwise, but I have done a sharpening job on this one right here. And uh, the way my sharpening went, you know, it's very subjective, but feels a lot like S35VN. I do have some genuine, I do have some knives that I genuinely know for sure are S35VN. And so they sort of feel similar when uh, I was sharpening them. So we've got two little knives. Uh, when you've got this coming over like that, it's called a friction folder uh, with an extended back. At least that's what some people call it. So the pivot point's right there where you see the screw and then, you know, that's sort of what these are called. Uh, a number of companies make these larger than this. It's an old style. This is actually one of the earliest styles of uh, folding knives. They made them like this and you know, they'd screw them together and then the back spine would come over. Imagine this a whole lot bigger and your hand would come over it and your hand would basically lock the blade in place, lock being a relative term. So we've got this little guy and we've got this guy. He's got a detent. It's a lot like, uh, you know, a, a liner lock arm, but it doesn't actually lock. It just has a detent ball that sort of holds. You can hear it. Uh, and that sort of holds it in place, but it is a slip joint because all it takes is a little bit of pressure, not very much at all, to uh, close the blade. So we've got these two slip joints. They come in three colors each. You've got this rainbow anodization and you can get it in this blue, and they have it in a gray, a gray that looks a whole lot like the uh, blade color gray. Each of these come in all three colors, so let's get the camera pointed down onto our little table, and we'll take a good look at these knives. First, we'll take a look at the one that's the larger of the two, and I happen to have two of them in the blue, which is a lot like my background color, and in that rainbow, which on this blue, you can sort of see that rainbow color quite well. You can see it starts at this sort of purpley kind of color, goes through the gold, green, and into the blue. You can see it on the back there quite well. The range of colors on there. It's actually quite nice. Uh, you've got um, these three lines melted, melted. <laughs> you've got these three lines milled into here, and I think that's for some grip. Uh, if you want to hold the knife like this uh, to do some cutting, I think you're probably going to hold it like this a little bit more. Some kind of pinch grip, maybe put your index finger in the back of the hole there and uh, your thumb right on it as well. And keep yourself clear of the cutting edge and uh, you know then you're able to uh, you're able to cut things quite well. And it actually does work very, very well. This is the uh, one that I sharpened. And so you've got that uh, mirror edge that you can see right there. What we have is a chisel grind. And this is, goes for both of these. A chisel grind, it's flat back here, but there's a bevel on the back. So a chisel grind with a back bevel. This bevel's at 15 degrees. Uh, most folding knives have their bevels at 20 degrees. So 20 on each side, so around 40 a total. Uh, and then add the 15 degrees here, and that will tell you the entire angle of the cutting edge. And that'll be on the screen. 
a decent knife. We've actually got ball bearings in this pair of knives right here. That pivot there, I initially thought was just white nylon washers. Because if you look in there with some light, you can sort of see this white nylon. And that's because the bearings are, you know, tiny little steel ball bearings embedded in this white nylon um, uh, frame for it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a good picture of that right now. So that's what it looks like in there. And that's, uh, you know, part of the reason why it's actually got very smooth action. You've got the uh, stop bar right there attached onto the blade right there. And so that comes in and you see it stops right there. You can see the pin on the head there. If I can get it to close. So there's the stop bar pin right there and it stops in that gap right there. If I can get the light just right. And on the other side, if you look inside there, you can see a bit of a milled out section there and that pin goes in and stops right there. It's a little bit hard to see in there, but it's in there. And uh, that stop pin stops the uh, edge from touching the titanium right here. It stops and it's safe and it can't spring in there. There's no springiness. There's no give to it. And that's how it is. We've got this lanyard hole here. There's that lanyard hole you can see the hole right there and then you can see how they've milled out a section for you to uh, put the lanyard in and let's just use this piece that we have right here still and uh, if you pull the lanyard over you can see that it stays below that edge there there you go you can see that lanyard stays below that edge right there and uh stays in that spot. So that's good if you want to use a lanyard on there. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to carry these or if I'm going to carry these or if I'm just going to keep these as, you know, knives in my collection that are basically going to become, you know, you take them out and look at them when you want to look at them. I'm not sure if these are going to become regular carries at all. I'm quite sure this one will not. But these ones, you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. And I'll probably sell off one of these two. You've got a really nice blade there, stone wash finish on it, and uh, it actually cuts quite well. Here's some one inch wide banding, and uh, just zips right through it very, very easily. You don't have to pull very hard. Very, very sharp tip on this, which is how you have to cut when you're on a tabletop because you can't get it flat. Well, you can, but uh, it's not going to cut really with the belly it's going to cut more with the tip but you can sort of get it flat uh, let's see if I can get a something yes yes here we go there's an edge there so as you can see right there it does go flat and uh, so you can cut flat I was wrong about that but you have to keep your hand off of this edge right here if you keep your hand off that edge then the blade can go flat on whatever surface you're cutting on uh, just barely though uh, the, uh, the knife is very sharp. It should be able to cut wood quite well because it's a chisel grind. <laughs> and yeah, it just cuts all day long if you want it to. You have to remember though that it's on a very weak detent. Not super, super soft. Once it's closed, you know, it's safe there. In this position, it's safe. It's not going to open very easily on you. But during use, it will close fairly easily. And that goes for both of these. This one's got a little bit stronger detent. So you're going to get some variability in the production of these. This one's got a stronger, you know, detent. You have to push a fair bit harder before it starts to close than this one. It just is what it is. You're going to get what you get when you buy them. Um, this little guy, I've not done any sharpening on the uh, the edge at all uh, of myself. I've like, done any of my own sharpening. But you'll be able to see that it cuts very, very well. No problem at all. Uh, you know, this little guy can also cut wood. It's much more of uh, how do you get a grip on it. 
uh, the uh, the edge can cut really well, but how do you get it in your hand to cut really well? You don't. This is a not. I'll clean this up here. This little guy is much more of a novelty. It just is too small to effectively use really well. You may think you can get a good grip like this, and yes, you can. But then you also have to have something that you can cut while you're holding it like this. And a lot of things you can't. Like you can't get down on a table very well. You know, you just can't get onto that kind of surface to cut. You know, there's a lot of things you just can't cut with it that way. You can try to pinch grip this way and maybe cut a few things. It's just not a very useful knife. Uh, the other thing about this one is how are you going to carry it? You know, the stop point stops it right there. There's no hole anywhere except for this thing. And if you put that hole on a keychain, you know, if this bumps into anything, it's just going to open up and then you got a sharp edge. Um, it'd be better if there was some kind of hole somewhere on this frame, but there isn't. You know, this is more of a little gimmick kind of thing, and I'm going to keep it on my shelf, and I'm not going to be cutting with that little guy ever. If you want to get your own and you just want a nice little collector's knife, uh, probably I would suggest get the rainbow colored one because then at least you've got a nice splash of color to go with it and give it a nice little effect that way. Let's give you the sizes and everything and we'll keep going on from there. Uh, this guy, the cutting edge, four centimeters, 1.58 inches. Blade length, I measured from the back, from the end of the handle to the tip of the blade. 4.6 centimeters, 1.8 inches. The thickness of the blade is 2.88 centimeters, 0.113 inches. Uh, the thickness of the edge behind the grind is kind of hard to measure because there's only one bevel. So I measured where this bevel ends and then, you know, matched it up on the other side and used my vernier calipers. 0.59 millimeters, which is 0 0.0235 inches. The uh, handle length, I measured it this way, six centimeters, 2.36 inches. Uh, the grip area, I measured down here, is 4.9 centimeters, 1.9 inches. The uh, handle thickness is measured right here, point, uh, no, six millimeters, 0.6 centimeters. That's 0.236 inches. Total length open is 10.5 centimeters, 4.15 inches. It weighs one ounce, which is 27 grams. Uh, S35VN stainless steel blade, which is why they're asking $31.92 Canadian for this knife. $25.51 US. Euros, 21.69. And pounds, 19.49. And uh, there's right around a dollar US uh, shipping fee on this. Not an awful lot of shipping, but so there you go. So, you know, $25.50 US for this little piece of knife. There's not an awful lot of milling on it. There's not an awful lot of labor that they had to do, which is what one of the things that leads me to think that this probably is S35VN. Let's do the sizes on this little guy now. Cutting edge right here is two and a half centimeters which is 0.98 inches. It's almost an inch of a cutting edge. Uh, blade length, I wasn't sure how to measure it. Uh, so I measured from the center of the pivot point to the tip of the blade. So from the center of the pivot point to the tip, 3.4 centimeters, 1.34 inches. Uh, the blade thickness is 2.9 millimeters, which is 0.115 inches. Thickness of the edge behind the grind measured the same way I did these ones. And that's actually a bit thicker, 0.73 millimeters, which is 0 0.029 inches. Uh, the handle length, just this almost rectangle piece of uh, steel, this blue, is 4 centimeters long, 1.58 inches. Uh, grip area, I'm just going to call the same thing, 4 centimeters, 1.58 inches. Handle thickness right there is 5.7 millimeters, which is 0.22 inches. And uh, the total length of this thing when it's open is 6.9 centimeters, 2.73 inches, 19 grams or 0.7 of an ounce. This knife costs uh, $22.93 Canadian or $18.33 US 
or 15.59 euros or 14.01 pounds. And again, there's about $1 shipping on this. Uh, and I measured shipping to Canada, to United States, to Britain, and to uh, Europe. So there you go. What do I like and I don't like about this? Well, I, I think these are nice little um, fantasy knives, to be honest with you. In the same category that I was talking about those fixed blades, those big funky fixed blades. I think these fall into that same category of fantasy knives. They are cool. They are, they're neat. They're nice. They sharpen up really well. They, uh, you know, these, this larger one of the two can be quite functional. Uh, and I might use it every once in a while, but it is a slip joint. So that's not, you know, the main thing that I like since I can have locking knives where I live, I won't be carrying a slip joint like this all that often. Um, it's more just to, you know, show off to my friends and knife buddies. Same thing with this guy here. There's just no way I'm going to be carrying this thing as a regular carry. You know, it just won't happen. Uh, they're not all that comfortable to hold. The bigger one's a little bit better. They look good. Uh, this one just has uh, white nylon washers in it. Don't take it apart, <laughs> please. <laughs> I took this one apart, and I sh I'll show you pictures of the inside of this one. And it was a beast to put back together. It doesn't have the exact same tightness that it did originally, but very, very close. Um, these guys are a little bit easier to take apart. Um, you get a couple different finishes here. You see the difference between these two? This one's got a beveled edge right there. This one's just flat. But they both have decent depth uh, torque screws there, so you can get a good torque screwdriver in there. And same thing on the back. You can see on this one too, it's got nice hardware in there, nice screws. So you can get your Torx driver in there quite well. So these are easy enough to take apart, but you know, if you don't need to, why would you do it? I take it apart to show you guys. Uh, as a reviewer, I think it's my job to let you see exactly what you're getting. I, I like these. They're really nice. I don't think they're necessarily worth that the asking price for everybody, but there's some of you guys out there that are more than willing to spend this kind of money if the knife is decent. And I think so for these guys. Um, I'm going to give you links in the description below where you can buy these if you want to. Um, I'm also going to give you on the screen the SKU number, the SKU number. I'll give you the SKU number for these on the screen right now. So if you want to buy these, put that number in. And the uh, SKU for this one is on the screen right now. So you punch in that SKU number and you'll be able to get it. That is if you can't get to the uh, description section below this video, because I have links right there in that description section so that you can just click on those links and get these things for yourself. If you use my links, I get a tiny bit of a commission uh, or referral fee. Uh, you'll still pay the same low price and I'll be able to, uh, you know, maybe even give you a coupon code. There's a coupon that's been working lately. It's called out 10 off. Um, and that gives you 10% off for anything that's in the outdoors category and knives are in the outdoors category. So there you go. Pros and cons. It's decent. It's not perfect. They're quite nice. I like them. Um, I'm not going to suggest that you shouldn't get them. I'm going to suggest know what you're getting and then uh, make up your mind and go for it. Uh, this one's not very practical at all. These are somewhat practical. Next Wednesday, if you live in an area where you can get locking knives, I will show you a couple of Wii locking knives by Fura that have the same steel, very different pattern. And uh, those ones are more worth it to uh, take out and actually use because you've got a nice locking blade. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And I'm not just babbling on when I say that. I really do appreciate if you do any of those four things or all four of those things. It really does help this channel out an awful lot. And I thank you so much for that. Remember, guys and gals, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.